Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, welcome back. In today's class, we are going to talk about an experiment in psychology which has not been conducted in the universities or it has not been conducted by a professor of psychology but by a teacher who taught third graders in this uh, town of Iowa and uh, in the town of Riceville in Iowa. And um, this is one of the most enigmatic and uh, wonderful teaching experiences that a teacher could give and this involves several psychology principles so and uh, actually followed rigorous experimentation um, procedures so I thought that you know we should discuss this in our class study on great experiments and studies in psychology so this is a famous study done by Jane Elliott uh, she was a student for third graders in Iowa and uh, the story is named, the study is named a class divided. So it happened uh, in 19, April 1968, the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. So uh, when uh, Jane Elliott went to school the next day, her third graders asked her, they shot a king last night, Mrs. Elliott. Why did they shoot that king? And that's the time when Jane Elliott, the teacher for the third graders in an all white town school in Riceville, Iowa, thought that she must explain to her students the reasons or the principles of discrimination. And she should teach her students how, uh, why and how, uh, you know, we should fight against discrimination, how it feels like to be discriminated. And she felt uh, that, you know, just by saying this, it would not work. So it would rather uh, be important for the students to go through an experiential um, way to realize how it feels like to be discriminated. And she felt that this would be a one-time experience which would actually help her students to grow up better. So um, the, uh, the class had in actually what happened was that in that uh, month they had uh, named Martin Luther King as the hero of the month for the class and the students, the ch young children of class uh, grade 3 could not understand why somebody would kill him. So Elliot decided to teach her class a daring lesson in the meaning of discrimination and how did she do that? she actually dis divided her class into two groups and uh, based it on the eye color. So she selected the, she made the students of uh, one, one group was uh, the blue eyed group and the other was the brown eyed group. So uh, according to Jane Elliott, the blue eyed brown eyed workshop is not an experiment. It is an exercise or experience. I don't experiment with people without their permission. What I do with the exercise is an attempt to create a microcosm of society in a small setting for a short time. If what happens during the exercise looks like an experiment, perhaps it's time to realize that we've been running an experiment on the people in the US for many years and it's way past time to put a stop to it. When society stops running the skin color experiment, I'll stop using the eye color exercise. So uh, basically, then uh, so she started with the blue-eyed, and she divided her class into a blue-eyed group and a brown-eyed group. And um, after dividing them on the first day, they were given different kinds of treatment. And so, what did she do on day one? So she suggested that over the two days, the class will be split into a blue-eyed and brown-eyed students and that on the first day, the blue-eyed people are, she suggested that the blue-eyed people are better than the brown-eyed people. And um, she provided instances and how they were better 
um, how they were less argumentative, how they followed things better in class. And uh, she gave them extra privileges. So, the blue eyed children in the class actually got extra privileges. And what did that mean? This, uh, this meant that they would get an extra recess, they could drink right from the fountain, they could have seconds, uh, help, second helpings at lunch and could play in the playground with all the equipment, playground equipment. And the brown eyed stu students who were actually uh, not in the preferential group who were being discriminated against would uh, have to use a paper cup to drink from the fountain, may not play with the blue eyed children. So, she was separating the two, two groups and they must stay off the playground equipment and wear collars around their necks to be easily identifiable. So, what she did was she made all the children wear collars. So, the brown eyed children wear collars on the first day and uh, thereafter uh, during the rest of the day both in and out of class, Elliot pointed out that most of the time brown eyed students would take more time to complete the tasks, they were more ill prepared and they, they did not take tasks serious things seriously and are generally and were generally disruptive and badly behaved. So, this these are the things that she kept pointing. So, these were teasers that she kept giving to the children and see uh, the brown eyed children are not doing their tasks properly, they are actually brown eyed people are not good. So, brown eyed people cannot perform well, brown eyed people do not take things seriously and they are generally disruptive and badly behaved. And she would also initiate the blue eyed children to give examples that of um, you know what she was saying was true. So, she would call up a student and say, say do not you think so? And don't you think this is correct? So, um, you know, so this was uh, she, she did this uh, to segregate the two groups. So, these are children who were friends, who played with each other, who did not, these were all white children, mind you. So, it was not even a color uh, that was actually uh, keeping them, making them separate from each other. But uh, the results of this simple discrimination of blue eyes and brown eyes. Uh, segregating the groups of, uh, into uh, by just the eye color brought in strange behavior among the children. So, it was seen that the blue eyed children easily and quickly slipped into the roles of the bully, the informer and the bigot. So, they ex actually extolled uh, one of them told Elliot that she should keep a yard stake close by, so that she can deal with the unruly brown eyed kids. And mind you, these are all third graders, and some children call others brown eyed as if you know this was actually reflective of uh, mm, of the prejudice that was uh, on based on racial discrimination. So the African Americans, how one would label an African American, uh, it was uh, just the same way that the children were referring, the blue eyed children were referring to the brown eyed children. Um, you know, and labeling them. So, um, then the next day, uh, it was uh, the children were again told that um, uh, uh, Jane Elliot told them that, well, I have uh, you know, I made a mistake yesterday and I realized that actually the brown eyed children are way better than the blue eyed children. And all the privileges that the blue eyed kids got the day before were now given to the brown eyed children only. So, the uh, brown eyed children were now given preferential treatment and the blue eyed children uh, were not given those preferences and privileges and they were asked to wear the collar. So, the roles were reversed and despite having been on the receiving end of discriminatory and nasty behavior because of their eye color only the day before or maybe because of it, the brown eyed children changed their roles to becoming bigots and tormentors easily and cheerfully. So, now they became more dominating. So, the roles had changed. So, the moment they were called or they were told that they were the better ones and the blue eyed were actually not the good ones, there the, the roles also changed. So, they became more, um, more um, uh, um, uh, dominating and they were more tormenting towards the same peers. 
who were now the now the blue eyed children were on the receiving end and um, actually later on after um, after uh, some uh, performance tests also uh, after the class uh, was almost over the later on uh, she discussed this experience so jane elliot told the children she ended the uh, experiment by saying that well i i think this is a bad day and i also don't like uh, this day because uh, you know perhaps because i'm also blue eyed and uh, then she asked all the children about their experiences and a blue eyed child describes his experience on wednesday that is the second day as like being a dog on a leash so that is the second day when he was being discriminated against and uh, so these uh, this was done on a tuesday and a wednesday and at the end of wednesday elliot explicitly led them uh, to the lesson of the experiment by asking whether eye or skin color should be how one should decide whether someone is good or bad or if those things make a person a good or a bad person and all of the children said no now uh, this test this was done in 1968 for the first time so jelly did uh, jean elliot did this after the uh, the day after the death of martin luther king junior with uh, and she practiced this exercise on discrimination this experiential exercise on discrimination and its effects on human beings uh, in her class then uh, she tried this exercise thereafter with several of the other classes every year and on the third time that she was doing this exercise with her third graders the front line actually recorded this whole session and later on uh, they also um, did a reunion 14 years later and they recorded the experience and what this whether this learning actually carried through to the children and did they learn uh, did it make them uh, you know uh, how how did it affect their ways of looking at perceiving people whether they were um you know practicing uh, what were their perspectives on discrimination so all this was assessed 14 years later and that video was also recorded so if you really wish to see this you just log on and um, you know you click on to a class divided it's a very interesting video and you will get to see the whole exercise that was done in 1970 and uh, thereafter you know 14 years later also and now getting back to the experiment uh, what um, elliot did was uh, she carried on uh, some assessments before two weeks before the exercise during the exercise and two weeks after the exercise so they were spelling test maths test and reading test and it was seen that the student scores went down the day they were discriminated against so the day that they felt that they were on a leash as a student describes or um, you know they were uh, being they were not getting privileges they were uh, not being they were being untreated you know uh, in a um, you know a poor way in an ill way ill mannered way that that day their performance uh, on the spelling test maths test and reading test went down and the day they were uh, get, getting the privileges or the day that they were being told that they were great people they were good people that day their scores went up and after that they they maintained a high level for the rest of the year now these results were actually sent to the department of psychology stanford university and which was it was reviewed by some of the psychology professors there and they said that this was impossible that the performance there was some effect on the academic performance of the students but within 24 hours of time and that uh, the the academic performance had somehow gone up but this behavior uh, they said that it couldn't be explained so probably the students responded to the stimuli better knowing that they were they are good so probably you know that also gives us uh, 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 um, uh, an awareness that you know if you if you uh, give positive feedback to an individual he or she feels better about it feels more confident and does uh, and tries better 
knowing that I can do well. And actually the other side of this story or uh, the moment that you know we feel that we are not good, so we do not try, that was actually done by Seligman in Martin Seligman in experiments on learned helplessness. So, if you wish to look it up, that is also another very interesting series of experiments. So, this, this shows that you know if you give positive feedback to people, they perform better. So, on the other hand, if you give constantly, if you um, put down a person, so or you know, if, if the person starts feeling that I am helpless, I cannot do any better, then uh, he will not even try. And that was actually these experiments were conducted by Martin Seligman later um, on learned helplessness. So, getting back to this, so um, what did Jane Elliott show over the um, through this exercise? that uh, the behavior of the students astonished both the students and the teachers. So, even they themselves were really um, astonished by their own behavior, the children. And on both the days, the children who were designated as inferior took on the look and behavior of genuinely inferior students, performing poorly in tests as we saw in another work. In contrast, the superior students who actually were told that they are, uh, they are better than the others they became more sweet and tolerant before the exercise and became mean spirited and seemed to like discriminating against the inferior group. So, they, their behavior was better towards the authority, so who was actually favoring them, but it was mean and discriminating towards the inferior group. So, just imagine that this is just a reflection of how things work in society. So, as Eliot correctly pointed out that this was a microcosm of the society. So, uh, according to Eliot, I watched what had been a marvelous, cooperative, wonderful, thoughtful children turn into nasty, vicious, discriminating little third graders in a space of 15 minutes. She says she realized then that she had created a microcosm of society in a third grade classroom. So, that is how even in reality things work. And uh, you know when the debriefing started after the exercise um, and when the pain is over and they are all back together, Elliot points out, you find out how society could be if we really believed all the stuff that we preach, if we really acted that way. You could feel as good about one another as those kids feel about one another after this exercise is over. You create instant cousins. The kids said over and over, we are kind of a family like a family now. And they found out how to hurt one another and they found out how it feels to be hurt in that way and they refuse to hurt one another in that way again. And you know this review was done after 14 years again and when they were interacting, they shared their opinions, how they felt. In fact, uh, some uh, of their spouses also accompanied them to their reunion and there uh, you know this was, mm, the, this was decided uh, you know they discussed how they felt and how they reacted over the last 14, 15 years of time. So, as I mentioned that this rerun was done um, when the frontline cameras were present in the 1973rd class, third grade class and later on they were actually shown uh, to this group, the seniors again when I mean after in the re, uh, reunion and um, how the students saw uh, what did they say after 14 years. So, as Varla or one of the former students says that nobody likes to be looked down upon, nobody likes to be hated, teased or discriminated against. And Sandra says, you hear these people talking about different people and how they would like to have them out of the country. And sometimes I just wish I had that collar in my pocket. So, she is referring to this exercise that she had carried on in her third grade. So, this is uh, you know these are some of the quotes from the reunion. I could whip it out and put it on and say wear this and put yourself in their place. So, these children had grown up to be more mature and they basically because they had been in that same discriminated position earlier. So, I wish they would go through what I went through and you know. 
So, J uh, Jane Elliott has been after um, you know starting this lesson with uh, third graders, she actually uh, got this to a larger perspective and she started doing this practicing this in the um, as a training session for several other uh, organizations as well and one of them being the Iowa prison system. And in a du during a day long workshop in human relations, she teaches the same lesson to the adults and she still does it. So, she has a website of her own and you can look it up and um, their reactions to the blue eye brown eye exercise strangely are similar like those of the children. So, it does not really matter whether they are third graders or they are training officers and uh, guards in uh, the department of corrections. So, if you just uh, see this video, it is very interesting because uh, you know hear how uh, they start the discrimination. So, this was also recorded you know one of her training sessions in Iowa department of corrections and uh, here uh, the sta correction staff attend a training semi seminar and they are separated by their eye color with blue eyed individuals being discriminated against. And um, the blue eyed individuals have to wear green collars, they cannot use the bathrooms as uh, everyone else and are treated badly. And they are made to wait outside while the brown eyed people are taken into the workshop uh, and they are made to wait outside and then even after half an hour's time when they get in all of them are not, uh, they do not have seats. Uh, and they are uh, the blue, uh, the brown eyed people most of them also do are not uh, are going to not, uh, they do not allow them to sit beside uh, the brown eyed people. So, um, then so and uh, with over the session uh, Elliot constantly uh, keeps pointing out how inefficient the blue eyed people are, how badly uh, they uh, you know they did they do not follow uh, the orders. So, this exercise that she carries out with the Iowa prison guards uh, and parole officers is one on um, she says that uh, the workshop is initially that the workshop is on listening skills and she every time she points out during the exercise that uh, this is um, you know the, uh, the blue eyed people do not listen actively they are not good listeners they do not follow orders they cannot follow things properly. They, they do not follow instructions. So, continuously there is a lot of ridicule and rebuke. So, if you if you just watch this video, you will see that you know what actually happens is she is discriminating against this group and uh, you know she is making them feel tormented, she, make, she makes them feel helpless and um, you know they, they cannot uh, the moment they rebuke or re try to retaliate and strangely it is only one part of the group who tries to retaliate and she suppresses the retaliation while the others they keep quiet. And um, uh, then uh, after a break Elliot debriefs the entire group and asks for their input and many of the blue eyed employees describe feeling powerless, hopeless, angry and wanting to speak up, but being afraid to do so. One even explains. Uh, in one of these uh, sessions, the recorded session, I am talking about the recorded session that you will actually get to see uh, from the front line videos. And uh, there uh, they explain, one, one individual explains that when they try to argue with her, their argumentative behavior is then just twisted and used to further support their supposed inferiority. So, it is it's like you know, see he is arguing that just means that See, because he is inferior, he is arguing. So, it is just twisted and mm, put forth against them, against the individual. So, the brown eyed employees actually felt embarrassed and one of them said that I am relieved that I do not have blue eyes. Mm, and um, uh, one white brown eyed woman stated that all the blue eyed people are white and while this might have been uncomfortable, they cannot truly know how it feels to be black in America where every morning you wake up knowing that day is going to be a struggle and to have your ideas and voices heard and not to be discriminated against. So, uh, you know people in this Iowa prison um, experiment uh, with, with the you know with the guards and parole officers, they are also they go through the same feeling as the children 
uh, went through or uh, in the, thir the third grade is went through. So, uh, this uh, you know uh, this exercise actually shows that uh, you know racism is a learned trait. So, the moment how we are actually uh, you know how, how we uh, behave with an individual the how you know that brings in the re reactionary measure and that is how you can actually uh, implant these ideas on an individual. So, it is not only for racism I would say that this exercise this um, experiment of Jane Elliott is very important in our context as well. So, when we are talking about communalism, when we are talking about discrimination or prejudice in any form, this exercise really gives us an insight that uh, you know people who have uh, gone through the sufferings themselves you know would uh, be able to empathize with the individuals who are um, going through such sufferings now. What happens is or on the other side of the picture we also see in society that uh, you know there are people who feel that because I have gone through this uh, uh, torment earlier it may uh, why not uh, now let him face this trouble. So, that also is a learnt behavior and it is the responsibility of each individual to see to put himself in the other's shoes and especially if we have teachers here or you know we are all uh, we could all teach a lesson to ourselves to begin with on this experiment through this experiment on discrimination as to how you know we can internalize this in ourselves. And um, according to Karl Horowitz in 2007 this experiment not only had an impact on the children's individual behaviors, thoughts, feelings and moods but also of the people of Riceville and um, this actually they really uh, showed less displeasure over time. So, uh, to conclude these experiments point to the predictability of evil. So, we can actually train individuals to be evil. So, that is learnt behavior. So, nobody is evil by birth, nobody is evil by as an innate response, but it is learnt. The process with by which ordinary individuals can do wicked things so long as they have the proper framework in which to rationalize them. The most important message that the experiment reveals is that the children believed and trusted what their teacher told them in much the same manner in which we believe and trust what their parents teach them. Changing the racist attitudes and behaviors in the world and in this case I will talk about discrimination as a whole it is not only about racism but any form of discrimination uh, and you know discriminative attitudes and behaviors it starts with parental guidance and the belief of how other people perceive them led the participants to believe it about themselves. Nation is learned and uh, she also showed that you know if you give a preferential treatment or if you if you give a positive treatment towards uh, people if you uh, make them feel good their performance also increases and that strangely could not be explained by psychologists. So, um, you know I believe that this is um, this this though it is not one of the uh, written published experiments in psychology, but this definitely finds place in our lecture series and I believe uh, each of us should take a personal lesson from this teaching. Thank you.